actually, if we're talking about social, everything's video driven. Yeah. It's not picture driven. <laughs> now it's yeah, video yeah. driven. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Especially for music. You know, music's not even audio driven per se anymore. Right? Discoveries all through video. So yeah. he's him being video driven, you could see how he can master the art of that. So we're joining the ads worked out, I guess, right? Yeah, it was our first it was our first way of actually getting to um, you know, our first core audience. Um, he, he hit me up after about two months of doing, you know, the ads and he was like, Bro, we you know, we're doing we tried some radio stuff over here, you know, um, we hired some consultants to step in and say they can do this and that or whatever. And he goes, I'm not seeing a result from any of it. Like, I, I can't even measure. Like, I don't even know if it's working or not, really. You know what I'm saying? He goes, but I know every morning I wake up, there's like 200 people in my Facebook Messenger, like in, 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 the, in the, you know, the direct messages at that time, right? Yeah. And he goes, and they're all telling me they discover my shit and they love my shit. And you know what I'm saying? So he was just like, whatever you're doing, bro, just keep doing it because I know that's reaching people. You know what I'm saying? And at right now, as an artist, he goes, I just, I just want my shit to be seen and heard. He goes, the worst thing is I craft like some of my dopest shit and someone don't see it. And he goes, that's like the worst feeling as an artist. So he goes, I just want to make sure it's getting seen. So whatever that is you're doing, just keep doing it. And then we, that's kind of how we built. And then, you know, I would, I would show him the platform and show him how, to, how, how that worked. And then he learned from that and he would apply it. You know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it would work for everybody, because you gotta you gotta be able to have that mindset to make that work. You know what I mean? Like you gotta have the mindset to make that work for you. Like even the way from from the way he you know directs his videos, the way he writes records, like he knows how to put the pieces together. You know, because he like a director first. That's interesting because I was gonna ask you like, what do you feel sets Joiner apart? He a director first. Like he he filmed first. Like over everything, like you know what I mean. He's he's a really talented. Like they don't people don't get people only see the final product. They don't see like how he actually does it or how what goes into like. I've seen this guy just come up with something, shoot it, next day it's done, and it's like masterpiece. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like that quick, you know, because he he just know and he edits all his videos too. All right, so, so he don't have to think about I've got to shoot mad shit and then figure out what I want to use. He's like, shoot that, shoot that, shoot that, shoot that. I got it. We're done. Because <laughs> he's the one editing, and so he already know what he wants. Yeah. Yes. So when you say he's 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 video first a lot of times, is it to the point to where he's sometimes coming up with video treatments before the the song is created, and he's working backwards from there? Yeah, that's crazy. Okay. Damn. So he's writing into a world that already exists, basically. Yeah. It's man. It's, it's super sense. unique. Man. Yeah. It's super unique. So you know, and obviously. If we're talking about social, everything's video driven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not picture driven. <laughs> now it's yeah. video driven. You yes. know what I'm saying? Especially for music. You know, music's not even audio driven per se anymore. Right? Discoveries all through video. So yeah. he's him being video driven, you could see how he can master the art of that, you know? Um, and that, that's also why he's also like one of those artists that's not like overly like saturated online. He don't just post every single day. You know what I'm saying? Like he's not that artist. And I think it's because he has like this level of like um, integrity in what he wants to put out. If that makes sense. Yeah. He cares yeah. about the art. Yeah. At the end of the day. And the, and and he, you know that platform worked for him strictly for that, so he treats that equally as impactful. If that makes sense. Yeah. You know. I just saw a video he posted, maybe within the last week, yeah. where it's like this one shot. And the cameras are going like around them, and it was just like, this is crazy. And to hear you basically saying, like, he's directing all this, yeah. it just puts a whole another level yeah, into he what you're saying. The whole thing to be a one tape, and so you know what I mean. And you go to the Will concept where he took like all the movies that Will's ever did and green screened all of them. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, 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 that video. And was able to yep. write the song where he's including the title of every song without it sounding whack. Like you know what I'm saying, like just. Yo, just, just such an incredible talent, bro. Like, you know, and for me, it's a, for me, it's such an honor to be able to like figure something out, and then be able to get take that talent and apply it, and take it to the next level. 
You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. You know what I mean? Because it's not, it, it, for me, it was like, I'm over here spending money on products, like promoting products, like a product maybe I don't even care about because my job was just to help the company put the product out. You know what I'm saying? So there wasn't a sense of like, um, you know, accomplishment. <laughs> if the issue, it was all numbers. Hey, I converted at this rate, you know, you got the lead for this cost, you made X amount of sales, you know, this is how much was spent, this is a platform that's working, here's your conversion pixels, you know, tied in, so if you wanna retarget them, I've got all your tracking set up, you know what I mean? Like, it's all that type of stuff, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't, um, there was no like, huge reward or feeling out of it, you know? So doing it for something like this was, yeah, it was definitely like a, a very satisfying film. Artists, managers, there is no way you should ever do a regular pre-save campaign again because Forever Fan has Forever Saves where a fan could pre-save your music one time and then automatically pre-save every song you ever release after that. That's right, forever. And on top of that, Forever Fan has email and texting all in one platform. This is built out for artists who don't have huge teams and don't want to get overwhelmed doing too many things in too many different places. So go to foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels, that's no labels with an S, and put in the code no labels 2 to get access and try it out for only a dollar. Forever Fan is your go-to place for your marketing needs as an artist so you can stay organized, have your own infrastructure to make it a lot easier to go to the next level. Again, that's foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels and type in the code no labels 2 at checkout to get access for only a dollar. Now back to the episode. Especially with your creative background, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> yo, it's crazy getting into music, bro. Like, yo, I grew up in London, right? And so the person that got me into music, he's one of the biggest producers in the UK. So he went to my high school. His name's Still Bangles, right? And he, he basically like DJ Khaled of the UK. Like he, he, the, he, he the biggest, you know, he started, he was, he was a DJ at one point, then he was always making beats. And now he like the biggest, essentially, producer out of the UK, all the newest talent come through him. You know what I'm saying? And um, he went to my high school and so, after high school, you know, me and him actually got close, and um, he's the one that put me onto music and introduced me to like Fruity Loops and that. So um, before I came to the States, I was working with him, and um, you know, I was the one that was like building the site and copywriting the music and sending it out. You know, back then to cop uh, I read this thing where to copyright the music, um, you would you would mail the CD to yourself. And you don't open it, the seal. So you, you do oh, like yeah, a certified I mail to yourself. Man's copyright, yeah. Yeah, and you don't and you don't remove the seal. So because it's certified. So so um, I was doing that with him back then, mailing the shit back and the certified seal. Cause you know like shit like that. You know, booking gigs and you know they had these um, things in the UK called daytimers, right? Where um, I think it was a it was a, it was a way of allowing like young people to go to the club in a safe way, you know what I mean? Um, but not at night time. Oh wow, that's funny. Right? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So um, we finished high school over there when you're 16. So they set up these daytimers in the city where you'd go to these clubs, and you you know there would be, it'd be, it'd be basically be a club but during the day. Yeah day parties you know what i mean so that was like where you know you would be able to kind of like you'd be 16 years old but you could still have like that <laughs> going out type yeah, party experience yeah because yeah. you leave high school when you're 16 so you know <laughs> you're going into college still young though yeah. so uh yeah i would like try book gigs you know copyright the music pay for studio time you know, uh, my uncle, he'd leave for like six months out of the year. So we'd be at his crib and making beats on the PC and shit. So on the Fruit Loops. So he taught me how to like use Fruit Loops. And that's when I was like, oh, I'm going to go music school so I can actually learn it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's why I moved to the States and I went to full set for, for that reason. But then fast forward, he ends up being the biggest producer in the UK, which is crazy because 
I was like almost investing time into him too, you yeah. know, because I, I believed in him. Hey, you got a nice hit rate, man. <laughs> no, no, there's, there's, there's definitely some L's there. <laughs> in between, for sure. There's definitely some yeah. L's, you know what I'm saying, that yeah. we don't go to talk about. <laughs> but yeah, like, but he was, bro, he was so dope. Like, at that time, he was like before his time. Gotcha. So, bro, he was, he was already like, he would listen to songs and sample out sounds out the song and throw them into FL and arrange that one sound into the drum pattern. He was doing shit like that in like 2002. All right. He was like playing like old records. He was, he was showing me like a song that his mom listened to or something and he was taking sounds from there and throwing them into beats he was making. Like he, was, he was doing crazy shit back then. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So he was, he was already like set for like greatness if you ask me because he was already just so in tune with it. It was a matter of if he was going to quit. Correct. That was really going to determine if he was going to become, you know, who he could be in, in, in music, right? If he quit, then all right, cool. But if he was going to stay at it, like, it was only a matter of time. And obviously, you know what I'm saying? If you see where he's at now, you know, it shows that he's, you know, he, he stuck with it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. yeah. What, what I'm wondering, man, right, so we get a lot of people ask us about music schools and, and there's a part of me that could kind of understand going back then because industry was a lot less accessible versus today where you can kind of like damn near dm anybody or you know possibly get a response back so do you think if you were 16 year old now you would you would still go to full sale or you think you would just feet to the pavement just hit the ground grind the diy way that's a tough question <laughs> everyone's at a different starting point yeah. i think which is the most like key thing so if you're like brand new out of doing some thing out of your bedroom and you don't really know enough and you don't got resources around you, you know, where they know enough. So you like don't really got anywhere to turn to get what, you know, what you want to get other than like Googling and finding it yourself. Yeah. You know, school doesn't just like give you information because you can get the information anywhere, you know, school almost it's like a personal trainer it's like going to the gym and having a personal trainer right. a personal trainer keeps you on track and make sure you're there every day at a certain time and you're doing scheduling and so school is your personal trainer you know what i mean it's making sure you're in the classroom you're there at a certain time you're getting the information it's testing you on it right it's holding you accountable because otherwise you fail your class right yeah. so you know if you're one of those people that needs that you know, where you need to be held accountable, you know, then I would say, yeah, school, like school would probably help because you're going to be accountable. Um, if you're one of those people where, you know, you could wake up and put five hours, two hours, six hours, some whatever time you have into what you want to do, then, um, then maybe you don't need school. Maybe you can do the research. And, you know, I never went to school for marketing, but that's because I was willing to invest so many hours into it, bro. There was one point I invested so many hours. Like when I met Joyner, I was antisocial. I won't even talk to people. Because I was spent so much time just focused on a computer. I didn't care about outside shit. Yeah. I was like, this is my value right here. Right? And I'm gonna put every hour and time out instead of an hour you go, going out and doing this or whatever. No, I'm I'm putting it right here. Let's take a quick commercial break to talk about Spotify Discovery Mode, one of the most powerful tools when it comes to marketing music today because it puts your music in the algorithm on Spotify to be listened to along with music similar to you without you having to run ads, without you having to do any content at all, which is why a lot of artists tell me they love it. But a lot of artists don't necessarily have access to Spotify Discovery Mode unless you're a two loss user because with two loss all artists have a fair shot at getting access to spotify discovery mode just by submitting through them and they pitch all of their artists music to spotify to be considered for discovery mode so if you don't meet the criteria if you are in the position where some of the larger artists are sign up for two loss distribution at two loss.com that's t-o-o lost.com because that's just one of many extremely valuable features that two loss offers to his artists to make their lives easier and you can try out two loss for free by using the code no label that's n-o-l-a-b-e-l when you sign up so go to two loss.com and check out how you can get your music heard everywhere <laughs> 